This is Mick West of uh, Medibunk.org and ContrailScience.com. Uh, as I run websites that have a focus on contrails, I often get people sending me photographs of uh, strange-looking contrails and asking me if they can, uh, if I can identify them for them. This is a good example. This is one from a uh, Danny Vaughan on Twitter, and he says, "All right, Mick West, use your connections and track it. October 14th, Portland, noonish." And we've got these uh, pretty interesting contrails here. They're uh, curved in shape. This one looks like it's almost like it's in a circle. And there's one off in a distance, which also has this strange kind of curve and possibly possibly a bend there. That might just be a cloud. So how do we go about tracking down uh, what planes might have created these contrails? Uh, First of all, what do we know? We know it was uh, taken in Portland, uh, Oregon, and we know it was on October the 14th and about 12 noon. So what I use is a uh, website called flightradar24.com, which is basically a tracking site which tracks the positions of all the planes in the sky that use uh, a technology called ADS-B, which is just a... Uh, uh, flight tracking, uh, flight tracking uh, software uh, service. Anyway, so we go to flightradar24.com. By default, it's going to start in Sweden because it's a Swedish company. So we go over to the bookmarks tab over here and set it to North America. And we're interested in Portland, Oregon. So we go over here to Oregon. We zoom in, and there's Portland. Now. One thing you may have noticed straight away is that there's an awful lot of planes. These are actually the planes that are in the sky right now, which is uh, quite an incredible amount of, of air traffic when you really think about it. Uh, if you look over here, you see Portland has less than uh, some areas, but still there's quite a lot of planes in this general area. Uh, what we're interested in is planes that are making contrails. So what we can do is filter planes out that are too low to make contrails. So I'm going to go over to this uh, gear wheel here, go to filters, enable filtering, and do an altitude filter. And I'm going to set it to between 20,000 feet and above. And you click the plus sign here to add the filter. So now it's only going to show the planes that are high enough to make contrails. And you'll see you've got that gets rid of a lot of the clutter around uh, around Portland. If we click on an individual plane, like here's one plane right now over Portland, uh, Delta Airlines 984, you can see it's a flight from Las Vegas to Seattle, and it's flying over Portland at 31,000 feet, nearly 32,000 feet. So that's a plane that's high enough to leave uh, a contrail. One thing that's uh, of interest is that any plane that's actually heading towards Portland will generally be too low. If we turn the filters off again, you'll see all these other planes that are uh, going to Portland. Let's see, is this one going to Portland? No, it's going to Seattle too. That's a, a low-flying plane. But, uh, here's a plane going to Portland, and we see it's actually at 18,000 feet, which is uh, and it's descending fairly rapidly and that's going to be too low to make a contrail so if we just filter the planes that are flying over Portland that'll be the ones that are actually making the contrails you can see from Portland. Now going back to the tweet it was uh, October 14th noonish. Now what we can do in Flight Radar 24 is replay the flight activity. Uh, if you have an account, you can go back as far as a month. If you don't have an account, the free service will let you do it for, I think, it's about a week. Uh, so you can still do uh, trails that you've seen that day or in the, the last week or so. But since I've uh, signed up for an account, I can go back to, uh, let me just check, what was it, 10.14? Yes, October the 14th. And the time. Now the time is in UTC time. UTC is a universal time zone. And uh, since this was a couple of weeks ago, it was in uh, Pacific Daylight Time. And the difference between Pacific Daylight Time and UTC is seven hours. They're seven hours ahead of us. It's basically similar to uh, Greenwich Mean Time. The same as Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, so noonish would be 12 plus 7 is 1900 hours or 7 o'clock in the afternoon UTC so we can start playback 
All right, so what I'm going to do is just pause it straight away and have a look at what flights we see over Portland at uh, about noonish. Here's one ASA, which I think is Alaska, Alaska Airlines, and you can see it's made a little kink in there, probably not the type of thing we're actually looking at. Southwest Airlines, oh, there's an interesting one. This is Southwest Airlines uh, flight from Oakland to Seattle is flying in a, a loop over Portland, so that seemed like a very good candidate for a plane which would be leaving this type of contrail. What else do we have here? There's another plane under here, um, which is flying from, oh, that's flying to Portland. For some reason, it's still at 24,000 feet. Uh, <coughs> but here we've got a plane flying in a loop over Portland. Why would it be doing such a thing? Why would it be flying in a loop if it's going to Seattle? Um, the reason that planes fly in loops, although not technically it's a circuit, a loop would be flying head over heels, uh, is that there's a lot of traffic going to Seattle. These planes here are all going to Seattle. Uh, and it's a very busy airport and they have to schedule the arrivals in a very strict order. They have to arrive you know, pretty much on a you know one minute window so you can't just have planes just flying directly and then landing air traffic control in Seattle is going to uh, tell the plane to you know, arrive a little bit later or a little bit uh, earlier uh, than before and normally what they do is they will tell the plane to just take a, a slight deviation from their direct uh, route in and they'll fly in a little circuit like this or sometimes they will fly in a uh, they'll just fly off to the side and then back onto the track again. It's just basically a way of slowing down the plane's arrival so it can arrive at a particular uh, particular time. Now, one thing we can do in the filters uh, is we can filter by the airport that the plane is going to. So I'm going to do Seattle here, S-E-A, and do in. So we just have the planes that are going into Seattle. And I'll turn off the altitude filter so we can see all of the flights and let me just turn this back on get rid of the filters here so these are all the flights that are going into Seattle uh, at that time and I'm going to zoom right out so we can get a countrywide view just to get some perspective as to just how many planes are heading for Seattle at that particular time noonish on the 14th of October and let's just pause it here so here there's a lot of planes I'd say there's over 50 planes visible right here and if we zoom in to Seattle, here's the one plane that's doing the loop that may have made one of those curved contrails. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at some of these other planes over here. Now this plane here did a uh, quite a major deviation from here to here and then it's going back in again. So that might be a similar type of thing. Instead of doing a, uh, a circuit, it just went over here and then went over here, which again changes the the uh, order in which it arrives. Now you see, if you look at the actual planes coming in, they're very, very close to each other. Here's uh, Alaska 311 and here's uh, the, the Southwest Airlines flight coming in. And here's another flight, and you see there, there's not very much room for, for, for error here. Well, that's a very interesting one. You can see that it did a lot of uh, deviations of its flight here as it came in. It did not fly straight in. It's doing a lot of moving around, uh, looking uh, to get in at the right time. So yeah, I hope that shows you how you can uh, track down particular planes. Uh, one thing you might want to do if you don't know the exact time is just simply let the simulation, uh, let the uh, the recording play for a while and you'll see all these other planes coming in. Remember this is filtering for Seattle at the moment. Uh, and here's another another plane. You see it again not flying directly in. It's making these, these adjustments so that it arrives on time. Uh, so you'll see a lot of a lot of this type of thing. If you if we change things so that we see all the tracks at once. Uh, turn on meta tracks. Pause it. Now let's go in and just look at all the tracks. You can see there's quite a variety in the incoming planes tracks. They 
don't fly in what you might expect a straight line uh, as they are arriving they uh, have all these adjustments let's see you get the ones that are actually landing it's a short flight all right well there you go planes do not fly in straight lines